Welcome back. Today we're going to do a classic wet fly. If you go back in time a ways, you're going to find that uh, wet flies, even, even in my generation, I don't, I don't really have a lot of recollection of fishing dry flies until the really into the late 60s, early 70s. And I remember buying my first flies when I was a kid, and they're all wet flies. And, and, and even before nymphs, nymphs weren't really that, weren't around that much. And so you had a lot of the classics. And with the, what's really cool about what's happening right now in fly fishing with, the, with this stuff, the YouTube and all the Instagram and stuff like that, and all these new tires and how fly tines just blowing up, man. It's cool. It's, and there's all these young tires out there. And then a couple things happened along the way. One of them was, is the trout spay thing showed up. People started swinging, you know, just like back, uh, we've always swung wet flies, but you're seeing even more of it now. And so you're seeing this, this rebirth of these old flies, which is really cool because they've always hunted. These flies have always caught fish and they're really fun to tie. They're, they're a blast to tie. And then and you just get to play with some new materials. But when we look at this thing, one thing you'll see about these flies is that they're, they're supposed to be little drowned wet flies. And the thing that got lost as we went along and we got into the, the no hackle and the dry flies and the, you know, we went into this super dry fly era in the early 70s with the Swisher Richards books. And, and what happened was that, and then we kind of went into the nymph stuff and we weren't really exacting. And we, you know, Sylvester Nimes, he was out there and he was doing the wet fly swing thing and it had a little bit of a following, but it kind of fell off and it really shouldn't have. And, and one other thing to keep in mind is, especially if you do a lot of nymph fishing, these things are great on a nymph rig. And, and nobody fishes them. You, you just see, you know, we see this emerger, this and this and that. Especially if you drop shot. These are great to have you, because you know your upper fly is above it, right? And so these little wets are just money. They're just, they're the real code crackers. And a lot of days when you're out there, nothing's working. You put out one of these things, and even some of the, uh, like the Silver Invictus and the Parmachine Bell, some of these really old school flies, Europeans are still using them a lot, but they're really bright and gaudy. Uh, they eat the hell out of them. <laughs> and they're just, they haven't seen them. And so it's pretty cool. And so we're going to go through just, this is just to be the, this is probably one of the oldest wet flies there is. If you go uh, a hare's ear wet or a cow dung or one of the the coachman, you know, you can go back in time, you know, 16th century and find this stuff. But uh, we're just going to put a spin on it, you know, the kind of the more modern spin on it. So I'm going to go over a couple things here, just the basics. Uh, before I go on, though, I'm going to I'm going to talk just a little bit about this stuff right here. This is the new. This is it's not really that new. It's a few years old, but this is the GSP stuff that's gone into the the super micro. This is 18 odd thread that I haven't tied a lot with it yet. I mean, I, I brought it in a while back, but it's really, it, it's almost impossible to believe something that thin can be this strong. You can't break it. It's just, it's just ridiculously strong, but it's really fun to tie with and it allows you to get really tight bodies, really tight sets and have zero build. And for, it's it just, it's really new. It's one of the one of the problems in the old days with these little flies, this isn't really a small fly, I'm into a 14, but with the smaller flies, you get bulk build up on your hook and it was harder to get the materials on. So it's gonna be kind of cool. So it's, it's a Semper fly, it's, a, it's just, it's such a new product, it's really cool. I, I, I saw it a couple years ago at a tying show and uh, was pretty amazed by this stuff. So basically, now here, you know, I've done other things talking about this the, I'm going to use this 1530 uh, size 14 today. One thing you'll find with wet flies is you generally go up at least one set. You don't match the hatch quite as much as you do. You know, 10, 12, 14s are really common flies. And the one thing about these is you, I do tend to go to the heavier wire hooks because I want the fly underwater and it, it just seems to ride better because we're going to have a wing set on it. And so, I mean, that's, if you want to do it on a light wire hook, like I do a lot of my nymphs on light wire hooks. Uh, but <clears throat> that's going to be, we're going to have just the, the 1530, and it doesn't matter, whatever wet fly. 
Uh, for tail and hackle, we're going to use this, uh, just the whiting, it's well, whatever, whatever uh, soft hackle you like, it's a hen hackle. Uh, I really like these things, they're really versatile, they're cheap. Uh, you can, you know, two, three colors. Uh, I like this, uh, I, I use this dark bar ginger a ton, Coachman Brown, I mean, just whatever fly you're tying. There's, they're just like any other hackle, you can get it in anything. So, uh, body-wise, we're going to, I'm going to use, I'm going to use uh, pine squirrel. You can use either pine squirrel, uh, I mean, or rabbits, you know, hare's mass. This was called the hare's ear wet. So, obviously, it was originally done with hare's ear. I like this. I, I just really like pine squirrel. It's, it's really versatile. Uh, I do both. It's, it's just whatever you, whatever you like. They're pretty, they're pretty comparable. And I'm going to have some uni. Uh, this is another thing that kind of lost its way. We, when all the nymphs came out and everything started and we stopped using, you quit seeing the wet flies tied, oval tinsel kind of died away. You just didn't see it as much. And there, it seemed to be wire, wire, wire. And I really love this. This is, it's just an oval tinsel. It's a mylar tinsel. It's just spun around a cord. It gives you a little bit, a little bit bulkier, not bulkier, just a little bit more uh, width to it. So that's all there is to it other than the wing. And the wing's just going to be a mallard quill. Uh, it's, you know, it's just out of a, just the primary wing feather out of the, the mallard quill. And so you can do that. You can buy these things individually. You can buy them. There's not a lot of difference in price. So it's a really economical fly to tie. And the last thing on this that I'm going to not really talk about, but you don't see me using wax thread. Uh, on this GSP, on this really skinny stuff, on this 18 aught, I find it really helps to just, especially when you set this stuff, it really helps me to put a little wax on this thread because it's super skinny. And it just tends to, I don't, I don't need it once I get going, but I do it when I just first start it. So we're going to start this thing. Uh, I'm going to get some real glasses on here. So we're going to start this thing right up front. And a, this is more of a traditional style fly. So we're going to start the thread right where we want the, uh, the, the head to end. So you, I'm sure you can't see this, but I'm leaving just enough space where I can build a head when I'm all done. And then, like I do on a lot of my flies, instead of going to the back, when I'm going to tie it, this is my rib, and I've got my oval tinsel here, and I'm going to take this, and I'm going to tie it in just about where I'm going to set the wing, and I'm going to tie that in right on top, let it work a little bit to the side right here, and with wet flies, it's really... It's, it's really important that you use your hook as your gauge because they just it's, it's kind of a classic look. And so you're trying to have things that, uh, that belong where they belong. And so kind of important that we use this gouge as a gauge to where our thread ends. You see my thread hanging straight down at the gouge. And what that's doing is it's telling me that that's where my materials are going to go. When I put this, I end everything right there. And my tail's going to go in here. My body will advance from there. And when you tie 10 of these things, they'll all look alike. So I'm going to go in here. This is a soft tackle. There's no, I'm, not, I'm just looking for colors, all I'm looking for right now. I just want something. And the beauty of these, I, I, loved, I love bar ginger. I use it on it. Even on my dries, I use it a ton. And it's just what bar ginger is. It's color. And bar means that it's got the little, you know, it's like grizzly kind of. And you just get a multitude of uses out of this. You can tie this stuff, any, virtually any wet fly you want to tie, you could use just this hackle. And I'm just coming in here looking for a tail. And one of the things that I noticed very early on as a kid, when you looked at all, and still to this day, if you look at a lot of the wet flies, they're, they're just kind of drab. There's not a whole, I mean, you get into the Invictus and stuff like that that are just super flash, but, I mean, they're attractors. But if you look at most of them, they're just kind of drab, and so I like to look for just a little kick to the tails, everything. I did, that's the reason I went to this stuff over the, just the regular colors. And so when you look at this feather, I mean, you can see it's got, you know, it's got tips on it. It's a little lighter. It's got a little brown here. A little, it's, it's probably doesn't mean a thing. It just, it, I just think it dresses the fly up a little bit. And so now I'm going to take this, this tail, and I'm going to set it. 
I want it just a little bit longer than the overall body. And that the body's meaning not the hook, just the body that I'm going to tie in. So I want it just a little, I'm going to gauge that and go just a little bit longer than that. And so, and then just take a look at it right here. I'm sorry, I think I have a cold and I keep doing that constantly. But uh, I'm going to set that right there. And I just look at it. There's my tail. That looks good to me. And I'm going to move this forward in nice, nice, clean wraps. I like to I'm going to come in here. Just I want that to end just shy where I'm going to put my uh, wing in. Come back nice and clean. I, did, I like to work on a clean, clean slate here. I don't like to see humps and bumps in my materials. Get in here. Now we're going to do a dubbing loop. I'm going to take... You don't need, I mean, as you can see, I'm going to come in here and I'm going to go right back, nice tight. Now you can really see what I'm talking about with this thread. There is no build. <laughs> There's nothing here. I can't even see the thread on the hook, of course I'm blind, but uh, I can't see that there. I just want you to be able to see how little build I've got on that. So now I'm going to take this, this fox, or I mean this uh, pine squirrel, and I'm going to pick it randomly. Now this stuff's supposed to be, the body's, you know, it's all picky. It's a wet fly. And all that pick does is it gets a little bit of water built around it. And it gives kind of a translucency to the body. But what we're going to do is we're going to rib this with that oval tinsel. And so I want it really picky. But again, I have to build from here to here, right? I don't need much, I don't need much uh, fur in this thing. And so I just picked out random amount of this stuff. I just want a little bit more of the fuzz underneath here just for a little bit of build. But mostly, you'll see what I'm doing here. I'll, I'll show you in a second. Just don't, don't overthink this. Just, just kind of let it build random in your hand here where there's I just what I'm trying to eliminate. I don't know if you can see that. I don't want to have much of this fur that's all clumped together. I really like the fact that this is mostly all guard hair. When you look at this stuff, it's, I'll put that down for a second. There's the guard hair and the fur is underneath it here. Can you see that, Jeremy? Yep. So the fur is what, that'll clump up when you're, when you're putting it in a dubbing loop. So you try to make sure that's all broke loose. I don't need that. And so when I do this, I'm just going through and I, I pick, and if, I don't know if you can see that on my finger, but that's kind of a thick piece right there. So I just try to break it apart a little bit because all it does, it makes kind of a clump in there. All right. But this is, I've got probably an inch and a half, to t no more than an inch and a half of this stuff in, in here. I'm going to open this loop up. Let it spin around there while I was chatting. It's hard to see with this little tiny step. Which way it goes. There we go. So now I'm going to open that loop up and I'm just going to, I've made a little tiny taper. I've got a little bit skinnier in the front than in the back. I put this inside. This is the rising dubbing tool. It's, you've seen me use many times. And so I've got a little bit of a, a taper here. I'm just going to spin that. Look at that. And so it's nice and picky. I want it really picky. I'm going to use my, my rotary on this thrust, but I won't. And so I'm just going to go forward. I'm building a really fine, picky body. Right here, I've got stuff I can pull off to the side. We want it really picky. We're going to come right up to where we're going to set the wing. Get you going. Now, make sure it's nice and picky right now. You can even take, a, you can take Velcro or you can take a bore cleaners or whatever. You can pick this out. You want it pretty picky to start with right now. And so just make sure it's all fuzzy and sticking all over the place. Now we're going to take this tinsel and we're just going to make nice even wraps going forward, spacing them out. You're going to end up with four or five turns on a fly this size. Come over the top. Now, I'm going to just put a little, I want to cover that up because I'm going to have to set my wing in there. 
And you can see it's still nice and picky. If it's not, don't get too aggressive with if you're using wire because you can you can fray your tinsel, but it's nice and picky. You just need it to be a, a little bit fuzzy because when the water gets around it, it makes it look kind of translucent. Now we're going to set a, a wing. We're going to cut our wings out of this primary. Primary is the that's the part of the wing that they fly with, basically. It's, what we've done is you've, you've come in here on this, on your mallard, and it's these, it's the, these are the primaries right here, the ones on top, the long ones. And you just cut a couple out, and you come in here, and there's no real way to tell you how to do this other than, because you, know, you might like, like on this fly here, I, I mean, I know what size wing I like to see, and I, and I haven't, I was telling Jeremy, it's kind of like we did a pheasant tail the other day. I don't think I've tied one of these things in 35 years. I mean, other than just playing around, setting. But you never forget what you like the look of. And if you buy a fly, you like it. And I don't like an over, a, a really thick wing. I just kind of in between. And what you'll do is you'll get used and you'll see this stair step in your, in your primary. You're going to cut a piece this out. And you can see about, you know, you'll look and say, yeah, that's about the size I like. You know, if you want to really big wing, you'll cut a really big wing. And so all you do is you're going to, I'm going to come in here and I'm just going to cut right here. I'm going to cut a notch out of that wing, just like that. It's gone. Take the other one, do the same size notch. And you can, you can match these up once you put them together. And so there's the, you know, you're looking at it and you're going to compress it just a little bit. That might be just a little bit bigger than I want, but I'm going to put these together First thing I do is I come in here and I, I make sure everything's laying down and there's nothing wrong with the feather. So I'm just, I'm just massaging the feather to see that it's where I want it, and the length I want it. And then you make sure they're the same size. This one's just a little bit bigger than the other one. So I'm going to take a couple of those up. Now I'm going to match these. And, and this is, I've seen people do these both ways. I mean, some people like them off to the side, so they're flared this way. I don't like that. I'm just probably, probably because that's how I saw them when I was a kid. I don't know. When I was, when I was younger, they were always, they looked, they were always together. Come here. Oh, no, not good. I dropped one. Start over. I gotta grab another one because I dropped it. There's no finding it. Okay. So everything's good there. Now we're just, this is the hardest part of tying the whole fly is getting these things to lay together. So all I'm doing right now is I'm just matching those up so that the wings are the same length, same width. So they're just, they're just setting the same length as all, we, all I want them to do. And it really doesn't matter that much because as soon as they get wet, they're going to do their own thing anyway. So now I've got the wings set right here. And all you do is just set them on top. Just do a pinch between, have them both right here. Come in on top. Do a loose wrap right here and pinch around it nice and tight. Don't, and then just pull right straight down. All right, your wing's set right there. I like my wing to be just slightly past the butt. Just, I mean, I don't want it way back. And, and again, that's totally personal. If you want it to hang back halfway into the tail, great. You know, do whatever you like. It's just, it's, you get used to what you like the looks of. So I'm going to come in here, trim those butts off. And I'm going to leave space here, laying that wing back. Now I'm going to take... This is just a, this, I just took one of these, I cut them out in, in advance. And I'm going to take this hackle, and this is the same, uh, I just took it out of the, the hackle, the same one I took the tail out of. And I'm going to pull a couple, and I'm going to end up with about two turns, two turns of hackle on this thing, not a lot, it's just, they're supposed to be legs. And so I've left a little bit of space here, coming in from right to left, just caught that hackle. What I'm going to do is I'm going to wrap that hackle right to the eye. And then I'm going to, I have the hackle, I have the convex or shiny side to my right. Because when you look at a feather, it's, it's cupped, right? It's, 
it's, it's cupped down like this. And this is a classic wet fly. It's supposed to wrap around the body. It's supposed to fill around the body like that. So if I didn't tie it that way, it would fight me and go forward. So I'm gonna, I've got it laying from the shiny side to the right. Do my tweezers. And I'm going to take it right to the eye. I'm going to, and then I'm going to put the thread back and kind of push it and force it back even a little bit more. But I'm only going to go for two turns on this. So tied in. So there's one turn right there. And I'm just, I don't, you're just making sure that hackle stays forward. Looking at it, there's two turns right there. That's max. I, I don't ever do more than two turns on these things. They're not supposed to be, well, there's no supposed to be. It's just not how I like it to look. If you want more hackle on it, great. If you want less, do one. But that's how I do my own. Break him off. Now I'm going to just pull this hackle back a little bit, and I'm right to the eye. I'm going to pull it back, and I'm going to force this back with my thread, making sure everything's there. And on one thing about this thread is it just doesn't build. If I, I just did like six turns. If I did that with six on, I'd already have a giant head. This stuff is so, and it's strong. Man, this stuff is strong. So anyway, I'm going to build a little head. I'm using olive on this because it it's kind of shows up as, it kind of shows up as brown to me. And it's, you know, this, it looks good. And so now I've got, I'm going to have a three turn head on a fly this size. There's three. Come in here, my hands are rough. There we go. So the hackle's laying back nicely. That's what we're looking for. So you come in here, everything, I've got this nice little wing. Hackle's hanging back nicely. Come in here with a little bit of, with, whenever you work with GSP, uh, you have to, you have to glue the heads. I mean, on a lot of nylon threads, I wouldn't, I just didn't glue them that often. But you have to with this stuff because it's so slick, it can come undone. So anyway, this is, this is just a, this is the a classic hair's ear wet, right? This predates the hair's ear uh, nymph and all that stuff. It's a great fly. I mean, if you're, if you're swinging, if you know, like classic wet fly swing, or if you're a trout spay person and you really dig, you know, swinging, Generally, like I said earlier, generally these are a little bigger. This is about as small as you would go with one of these things. This is a 14. Usually 10, 12, 14 is your range. Uh, you can do it in a lot of different body colors and stuff like that. This is, this is a classic right here. This is the Hairs Air Natural. I fish this thing on my drop shots. Uh, put it on my upper fly always. It's a great emerger, believe it or not, uh, for mayflies or caddis because of the way it sits. I don't know. If they, I, I fished it right through on a caddis hatch and they eat the hell out of it. But anyway, it's a really fun tie. It's really simple. Uh, brings you back to the roots of this whole thing. Brings us back in time. And it's pretty cool. I hope you liked it. I hope it helps you out.